Ooh, deja vu. Okay, so this is my 0921 gearbox. Uh, you may have seen it in previous videos. Um, it's actually held um, at the front by this strap. Now this is actually a strap from a Type 1 to Type 4 kit. However, we've mounted it differently um, and it goes over the top of the gearbox and it's bolted um, through two, two tensile uh, lengths of uh, threaded bar which go through the actual frame horns themselves and clamp underneath. For today's task, I'm looking to replace uh, the gearbox bush. So the front bush on my gearbox was, I say it's all temporary, so it was done kind of as a last minute job to, to stop uh, an issue I had with the gearbox moving. Um, originally it was designed so the strap went further down the side of the gearbox and these side bushes here um, helped stop any sideways movement and there's just a single, it's actually a temporary one as well, but a single thinner one at the front. And what I found is it was actually pulling the gearbox down too hard. Um, so as a last minute uh, emergency fix before one of the shows, um, I raised this strap up and I put a, a, a bit of urethane bush in there as a temporary measure. And to be honest with you, it's actually worked quite well ever since. That's why it's been there so long. Um, however, I wanted to make this better again. So we're going to replace this bush and make something that's a bit more moulded that hopefully fits within this recess. And I'm going to try and shape it along the top of the gearbox and to the inside of this, uh, this strap and reduce it in size to something probably a touch thicker than the bottom one there. Um, but so this top one's removed completely. This is the strap that's been holding the front of the gearbox down. Uh, we've got the two temporary bushes there. The first initial temporary thing I made, you can see how it's compressed, look. We've got the two compressions there, and the ridges of the gearbox sort of kind of squashed it a bit. And that's 80 shore rubber, so the hardest uh, rubber you get with the uprated mounts and gearbox mounts on things before you go to the urethane. Uh, I just wanted to tidy the bushes up a little bit and it's real tricky to cut. I found a flat blade seems to work better than a serrated edge. And if you kind of hold the little tab off the bit of flesh, uh, like you would be flaying one of your victims, just kind of work your way down the thigh. Sorry about that. Um, I always thought the top of the gearbox was quite flat, but it's not. It's got a little raised section look in the middle, and then obviously the, the ridge at the top there. So I've done this a couple of times, and I've double checked it. Now I, the centre of the gearbox ridge there is actually slightly off centre from the centre of my strap. So I'm assuming for some reason my strap's slightly out of, uh, of centre. Now I don't think that's a major issue as such. Um, I'm going to mould it as it is, and should the um, the strap be out of centre, it just means that the, the bush will be slightly off to one side. There's so much bush at both sides of the gearbox, I don't think it'll be an issue at all anyway. So I'm just going to roll with it, and that's vaguely what we're going to try and create. I've decided to make the bush 25mm deep, so that's the measurement there. Um, obviously the, the ridge we just talked about in the centre is accounted for, which goes front to back on the gearbox. However, there's a ridge that goes side to side uh, on my gearbox and because of the placement of the strap it's going to be a problem. Um, I can't think of a decent way of actually moulding that in as we're doing this so basically I'm going to create the mould as it is right here and then I'm going to try and cut out a ridge side to side so the, the bush sits neatly over it. I don't really know what most people would use to cast a bush like this for a gearbox, whether they do it in sand or some other product, but I don't have any of those things, um, so I'm just using what I've got in the garage, as I do. Um, so for today, we're using a piece of insulation, it's just standard foam insulation. Um, it's 35mm thick, and it's just a fraction thinner than the inch and a half strap, so it should be just about bang on.
that seemed to work quite nicely. Now, before I can fill the mould, uh, I need to obviously seal the bottom of it. So I'm going to do that with just duct tape and cling film, kitchen cling film, or cling or sandwich wrap, whatever you guys called it. Um, now, I've done that in the past on this one, uh, where it didn't have cling film, it's nice and smooth. Uh, where it did, well, it didn't do it very neatly, it had folds in it, like you can actually see the cling film that's still there. So you can't separate the cling film once it's gone off, it's just sticks solid. But you can't really tell it's there and it's not an issue as such and it didn't seem to cause any problems in two years on the car. So we're going to say we're going to seal the bottom with cling film and tape and I'm actually going to put cling film around the inside edge of here because I have no idea what the, the rubber mix will do to the foam. Just a tiny bit of glue to help it stick to the edge. I think we're about there. So I managed to break off the, the part that was left as a mould for the ridge on the gearbox. So I basically I'll put a pencil in place to create a ridge uh, when we casted it. Sealed the bike with tape. Let's do it. Okay, the kit we're going to use for creating the 80 Shore rubber um, is a smooth on product. Um, I'm not associated or sponsored or anything, it's just what I found. It's PMC 780 Dry. Uh, rubber mold compound. Uh, with this particular kit you basically mix two parts of A to one part of B and give it a good old stir and it goes off like a, an epoxy product. Uh, you can add, add colour in. Uh, this is supposed to be orange and if you put too much in like I did it comes out red. <laughs> right, the components of this mixture don't read as happy chemicals so try to minimise touching them as much as possible and breathe them as even more. It says stir well before use. I don't know if that means before you actually mix it or after, so I'm just going to do both. Now I'm mixing 180 actually rather than 175 just for ease. I don't have a measuring pot, unfortunately, a paint pot, so I'm going to have to do it in two stages. 60. I'm not sure how accurate you have to be, so I'm being as accurate as possible. I recently mixed some clear um, plastics and it wasn't exactly half and half and it didn't set so try and be accurate if you can don't remember it being black so I wonder if it's gone off it might have gone off uh oh no it's still liquid that's good it does say there's a limited shelf life and I've had this kit for a few years now so it's done better than it's supposed to have done so 60 of the black 120 of this one so once you've mixed this and poured it it's supposed to take 48 hours at room temperature, over 18 degrees. So I'm not sure where we're going to do that because I don't live in the Bahamas. And it's supposed to be a well ventilated place. And I don't live in the Bahamas. <laughs> it's supposed to be one drip per litre. No put a load in, shall we? That is one batch of nasty marmite in it. Look at that. Ugh. Now no doubt I'm putting a load of air in there and I shouldn't be doing. It says pour it to the lowest point and let it find its natural level. Wow, well, that's just about bang on. Right, so I've wrapped my pots up in uh, cling filter. Hopefully they'll last another mix and not go off before uh, I get a chance. 
I put the excess in there. Hopefully we can make something useful of it. And our mould, which seems to have leveled out nicely. And there's some bubbles coming to the surface, but I'm hoping they'll all come out. Um, I've clamped it down onto a piece of wood so I can move it easily. And the only thing I've got now to do is get a chicken lamp or some kind of bulb that's warm in here, because it's about seven or eight degrees this time of year at best, and it's got to be 18. So uh, it's going to have to cure under a lamp. Let's hope the 60 watt bulb's hot enough. Right, I shall see you in 48 hours. Right, I've removed the tape. I was hoping I might be able to push it out in one piece without breaking the mould. Oh, we might get it. Oh, bugger. Oh well. We'll make another one, I guess, if we needed to. Okay, there we have it. Say, so it looks quite nice on this side, but it's not so pretty on the other. <laughs> Doesn't it remind you of some kind of food bar from some sci-fi film? I can't think which one it is. Anyway, um, according to the Smooth On website, if we put this in the oven now, uh, I'm going to do it for four to eight hours um, at 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, that's 65 degrees C. And according to the website, it increases the properties of the rubber. So. As it's an 80 shore rubber, I'm assuming it doesn't change the shore strength. I'm assuming it makes it less brittle and prone to breaking under stress. Um, but I don't actually know because it doesn't actually say. But we're going to do it anyway. It seems to fit inside the gearbox strap quite nicely. So let's see what it looks like on the car. So if the bush fitted here, it would be almost perfect. Unfortunately, that's not where the strap goes. Um, so we're going to have to come up with a way of basically clearing in the, the bottom of this uh, bush so it makes room for this cross member part here, this uh, the, the reinforcement on the gearbox. So to try and mark out where the ribs are when it's cut out on the bottom of the bush, I'm basically painting my finger and then using my finger to paint the bush where the ribs are. It's kind of fiddly to get to and you can't get a pen in there. I did actually consider at one point creating the bush on the gearbox itself so molding it on top of the gearbox between the the strap and the gearbox but i didn't think i'd be able to create a, a good enough seal to stop all the solution from running away that's given me a decent idea of where i need to cut out um it's slightly wonky um they say the strap is slightly wonky on the gearbox by a couple of mil and also if you see here it's the the block itself is slightly out of square with this strap as well so uh, it looks worse than it actually is I've just done a quick experiment to see how it cuts with an angle grinder. So basically using a, just a basic slitting disc, I slice the end off. And it doesn't actually grab how I expected it to, so it's a lot safer <laughs> than I expected it would be to cut um, a rubber block. I've got to say, it was much easier cutting out the channels than I expected it to be. So I didn't go in with any depth or any speed, so I took my time and I was careful with it all. Um, but it really didn't take long at all to, to cut it out, and it didn't snag once with the, uh, the slitting disc on there. So, a uh, bit of a win for that. Um, I've tested it on the gearbox a couple of times, and it fits on the, the ribs nice and snugly. That's just how I wanted it, so I was careful not to take too much out and have a big gap. Um, so we're going to put it back in place now. We'll get the strap on and fingers crossed We're pretty much done Okay, so when I push that on there nicely it sits on the ribs it Doesn't rock so it's on both sides and there's no gap that I can feel with my fingers at least and it feels firm We are pretty much done I'm quite happy with that so I know it's not the prettiest solution in the world, um, but as I mentioned, it wasn't meant to be. It's meant to be totally functional. That's about that. <laughs> now we've got the strap the right way around. I'm pretty happy with the bush, how it's turned out. It was relatively straightforward to do. It did take a few days because of the cure time and stuff, but say it was, it was straightforward. Um, the old bush worked relatively well, so I'm quite confident this is going to be a, a good improvement over the old one. Um, it's much wider, there's much more bush in contact with the gearbox than there was in the old one which was just kind of propped on top of the ridges and also my side bushes are down the side of the gearbox as well so in terms of stability uh, I'm expecting uh, a good upgrade. 
and hopefully it'll feel better under power um, and perform better. So I can't wait to give it a try and get some uh, get it on the road. Right, thank you guys for watching. If you stuck it out this far, um, hopefully it'll help you create a similar bush for a similar crazy project should you need to. Cheers. Take care. Bye bye.